second. Let's see here. Now you can ask him about that, so I might be sure that he can work. Will not be working? Okay. Okay, hear me. But anyway, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let me thank uh, Cedric for inviting me to come and be a part of this program. Uh, the Black History part of uh, this month, you know, is Black History Month, and uh, I know you are familiar with what this is all about. There's several things I want to I want to say today, uh, and I'm not I'm not certain at what stage you are in your incarceration. Uh, I, let me just ask, what 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 are your status here? Can anybody just is it, is both most y'all in the same type of category or is it a different category? Almost on release. Uh, almost release. Almost. We've all been convicted, and what this program is, is to prepare us for our release back into society. So most people in here are getting closer to that release. Good. That's, and that's, that's what I was hoping and thinking it was. Okay. And that's what I'm going to sell my, my little code. Just, just very briefly, because I want you to understand something. Uh, you, heard, you just heard Martin Luther King's speech. Uh, and everybody familiar with, with Martin Luther King and, his, and, and what, his, what he was about? Uh, the time that he made that talk was, was, a, was a time, especially in the, in the lives of African Americans, when there was very little freedom. We did not have the right to vote. We did not have the right to do uh, a lot of the, uh, the privileges that was afforded uh, the society of America. So he went to Washington to, 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 make a, to make a demand. I don't know if you remember, in his speech he said, we came here to uh, cash in our promissory note. And the promissory note was that in the Declaration of Independence, it said that all men are created equal, have, have uh, endowed with certain rights, the right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But he said, as far as, as African-American citizens are concerned, we are not privileged to, that, to those rights. And that we came here to Washington to, to cash in a promissory note because he said that we refuse to believe that the box of opportunity and freedom in America for black folk was insufficient that its, its sufficient funds was, 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 not, <coughs> was not the cause of why, why we were not being privileged to some of the rights of America. Now, he did another speech the night before he died, which, which really kind of prevailed what I want to lean into and finish my, my, little, my little conversation with you with this. He said the night before he died, he said, we have some different good days ahead. After, you know, this speech was, this speech that you just saw was done in 1963. But he did another speech in 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee. It was the night before he died. And after all that had happened to make progress, to show progress in America, his last speech, he said, we got difficult days. So what, what did he vision? What, why did he say that? Because he came to understand that if we're going to achieve something, we're going to have to work for it. It, it, it was not going to come easy. That we had to not assume and take, take, take for granted that, that, the, that the powers that are was just going to give us a free ride, a free stamp, a free, a free, a free, a free entry. But he also said something that 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 that, that I want to share with you, and that's why I came here to order. He said, within the crisis of America, 
you have both dangers and opportunities. Whatever happened to you to cause you to be here, you can't do nothing about yesterday. I came here to argue with you and to make a case with you. What can you do when you are released? What's available to you? It's all about, it's all about an attitude. It's all about an attitude. It's about who I want to be. What are my opportunities when I leave here? I know you don't want to come back here. You got a family. You got people that love you. You got people that you're responsible for. You have to think about the opportunities that you can, that you can enter into that will, that will make your life more productive and more meaningful. It's not going to be easy. But you've got to choose that path. There's a scripture in the Bible that said that, the, that, 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 that and you, you, you may know it, it's the parable of the Good Samaritan when they said that there was a man who was beaten and left on the side of the road. And three figures came by. There was a priest, a Levite, and then there was a Good Samaritan. The priest and the Levite looked on the man and they walked on the other side. Just to avoid, to avoid responsibility. But the Good Samaritan saw the man had compassion within your lives. When you leave here, attitude, but then also understand that in life, and to do good in life, when you see somebody that's less fortunate, there has to be something within your soul that generates compassion. Compassion for your children, compassion for your family, compassion for the society in which you live. To make you want to not move on the other side, but to accept the responsibility of what it is that you want and value in your life. So the Good Samaritan took the man, tried to do what he can for him. Then he took him to an end, and he had to move on. But he but he told him, he told the end people, he said, listen, I gotta go. But I'm gonna leave you some money. I'm gonna leave you some money. I want you to help, help take care of this brother. And if, and, if, and if you expend more than what I give you, then I'll pay you more when I come back this way. There are opportunities out here, gentlemen. There are opportunities. It's not gonna be easy. But, but, but I need you. We need you. We need role models. We, it's, not, it's, not, it's not unusual. Again, what happened to someone? Things have happened to me. I brought with me one of my close friends, Robert Thomas. He, he was here. Now he's out and doing a very positive thing, living a very positive life, raising, raising his son as a single parent. And he vowed that I would never abandon my son again. My son needs me. It ain't about me no more. It's about my son. It's about my family. It's about taking responsibility to, to use whatever talent and skills that you have that God has put in your heart, into your mind, into your soul, that I am going to change my life, that I'm not going to walk on the other side and make it easy. I'm going to accept life, and I'm going to do what I can do to move forward from here to live a very productive and meaningful life. Everybody is pulling for you. People want to see you. Now, there's another side that, that there is a profit into what is going on out here at CEC. We, we, we don't want that to prevail. We want to see you productive, 
doing things that will make a difference in the lives of not only you, but in the lives of your family, and in the lives of your children, and in the lives of your, your of society. There's examples. You don't have to be this way. There are, there are many people that, that, that came out of a bad situation and turned it into a good situation. I need you to be another one of those statistics to where you can give a testimony years from now and encourage these young guys. Because they are here. They, they continue to do crazy stuff. And they need to hear, hear somebody say, listen, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to make mistakes. There's going to be things that happen in our lives, some things that peer pressure and other, other, other negative elements draws us into. But at the end of the day, it's not about what and how we fail. It's about how we got up. That's what Dr. King was saying. That's the history of America. In spite of the negative elements that, that are lurking at us, that are lurking at our children, that are lurking at all these young men that's out there, that are thinking it's easy on this side. But if we can collectively work together. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a city councilman. I'm from Allendale. Anybody, anybody from Allendale? Okay. Okay. I grew up at a, at a, in an era where it was, it was no different than it was now. But I chose not to get involved with certain things. I have friends who did, but at the same time, they turned their lives around. We can turn our lives around. We can be productive. We can be proud. We can leave a proud heritage and a proud legacy for those that's following us. Somebody need to hear that. I'm out here working. Robert is out here working. In a few weeks or months, I want to see you out here working too. Thank you all very much. Thank you.